but Addy, you spud and I'm Addy. Just listen, you'll glisten, cause you'll be so happy. Our podcast is random talk on this and on that. What did you expect from potatoes and fat? Yeah, what did you expect from potatoes and fat? Hello, my name is the Adipose, and this is Bud Addy. But the pictures behind me are wrong if you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, but I'm going to fix them right now. And oh my god, my shirt is apparently green because it's the, the green screen is complaining. Really? Really? Oh, hello, Spud. Hello. The thing being weird. Is your head flying around on It's m- telling my me body? that my shirt is green. My shirt is not green. I don't know I, didn't, I, don't think I spilled that much stuff down it. Oh, well. <laughs> Welcome to I'm Spud green. Addy. This is the podcast where we talk about this and that and what did you expect from potatoes and fat. So tonight we will be talking about this and that. Some of it may be entertaining, some of it may be game-related, some of it may be kind of wrestling-related, some of it may be kind of life-related, philosophy-related, news-related, politics-related, earth-shattering-related, hypothetically-related, goofing-about-related, or about incest, which is actually related. Although we haven't discussed that before, so I don't know how that conversation would go, but who, you know, <laughs> needs reality to get in the way of a good joke, eh, Spud? I might have to go on the uh, <laughs> avoid the topic list. Avoid the so topic incest. List. Well, in case you're sure about incest, you mean that well, in case there's some brothers and sisters there going, but it's completely natural and we love each other. Do you know that incest is actually wrong? Because uh, it's an evolu- evolutionary thing. Yeah, well, so because- it's evolutionary because because technically there's nothing like disgusting about it, but there's like an imprint, like mental thing inside our brains that makes it disgusting to protect the offspring from like, you know, picking up like genetic kind of diseases or was well, not, not genetic diseases, but genetic defects and stuff. I did. I did know that. And, um, isn't that cool? It is cool, but it's, it, it's what, when I say, uh, my, my life philosophy, if it doesn't hurt you, then, and it doesn't hurt anyone and it doesn't affect anyone, then yeah. what's the harm? Yeah. People normally hit me with that. And I'm like, and the exception is that, what you've just said there. What is it? They normally get me with the whole incest thing, because it is a bit icky. But, but, yeah, but, but that's nature's way of protecting us. But then then you get, there are certain cultures around the world where you're supposed to, like, kind of marry your cousin and stuff. It's like a traditional thing. And then they get loads of, like, genetic conditions and stuff, which is difficult because, like, you can see the counter-argument is obviously, like, you know, by kind of staying in the same kind of extended family, you're kind of keeping everything that your family's kind of earned together, together. And, you know, there's like financial kind of aspects. And like, it also means, you know, if your gran on one side happens to also be your gran on the other side, then that only means you have to buy presents once at Christmas. Um, but there is a disadvantage when you've got like an extra head or your child yeah. can't talk or... Or you have to give your dad a Brother's Day card on Father's Day and Brother's Day and a grandparent card. And then it all gets really confusing. There's a Brother's Day? I don't know. There should be. I find mothers and fathers, even though I am a father, I find it a little bit unfair to other relatives. But even though when I do see a card for Grandparents Day, for example, I'm like, really? And then I'm arguing with myself at that point because I've just gone on both sides of the argument. Do you think that's why the Daleks like really don't like anyone who's not a Dalek? Do you reckon they're all about keeping their mortgage and their, you know, their, 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 their empire they set up in the family? And that's why they started the whole exterminate situation. Well, so Daleks are incest. Yeah, they're, all, they're all the same genetic material, so on a level. Aren't they, aren't they genetically evolved, modified versions of the Khalids? Are they Khalids? Well, this new isn't the newest batch all made from uh, Davros. Davros is changing their minds about the They do. At one point, they were all wiped out. And then, the, and then, and then they, do you remember they came back and there was like the red one, the blue one, and the green one, and the puce one? The Mini Cooper Daleks. And then they did, and then they could, they forgot about that. I thought there was going to be like this ongoing plot line where like there was these four Daleks, you know, the, and the and I thought it was going to be a bit like, I don't know, like Teletubbies or like you know, each Dalek would have its own personality or a mission. Oh my god, it's the blue Dalek. That means he's going to be really good in water. You could give the blue one swords and the orange one nunchucks and pretend they're turtles. See, or Power see? Rangers. But you see how there's aspects already. Oh my god, it's the orange one. He like exterminates people without even saying the word. He's like a ninja Dalek. That would actually be a ninja Dalek. A ninja Dalek is one that does And he rolls by on a skateboard as well. <laughs> off, off the screen. But then they, um, to forget, then they just seem to forget about it. Then they just well, seem to kind of go, oh, we, well, because remember that, that whole episode, that was the end of the, um, uh, it was the, well, the World War one, you know, the World War Dalek. And at the end of the episode, they created these four Daleks and then flew off and the Doctor was like, oh no, the Daleks are here. And then that was the last one I heard. 
and then the, the whole planet's back. Yes, you're you're getting into my era of nitpicking and the things that might go. Hang on a minute, no, 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 no that's not true. You're, no, my area of nitpicking is oh, there's a really cool plot line here that they've done nothing with, and they continue to do nothing with it. And your era of nitpicking is, did she put the ring on the same finger or? Did- <laughs> No, I'm not that bad. But when a whole race comes back into existence with no explanation, that does kind of get on my boobs a little bit. Get on your boobs. Would you like some... So, well, speaking of Doctor Who, I was in a game shop the yeah, other day. I know. Out, I'm listening. Meow. Um, I was in a game shop the other day. Shock horror. I know this is very un- unlike me. And have you seen the price of Lego Dimensions? Because I was, I was really interested. Because I like the Lego uh, games. I saw an advert saying... Starter packs from only £84, and that was the last time I looked. Well, I haven't seen any £84 ones. I saw the one for the PS4 in, in game, and it was £100 for a starter pack. And I was like, what? So that comes with call the game. A finishing pack. Exactly. That comes with the Hang on, I haven't even finished it. Um, that comes with the game, Batman, the girl from uh, the Lego movie, and Gandalf, and the Batmobile. £100. Then, each pack is £30. Like a pack could be, it's like Homer, a TV and a Homer's pink car. And it's like, that's 30 pounds. I know that opens up more levels in the game, but, but I just paid for a hundred pounds for the game. Why are you? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't get it. Like, I mean, that, to, I mean, I assume they must, they, I mean, they're not stupid. They must've done the economics and worked out how many people will probably buy it. Yada, yada, yada. But to me, that prices it out before it even starts. Like if Izzy, it was priced it out for me straight away. I'm yeah. That. If Izzy said to me in a few years, I want to do Lego dimensions or whatever it happens to be that's priced at that level. The answer would be no, it's too expensive. And the follow-up would be too expensive. If it was £40 for the starter, you know, a normal, a normal price game, and then each follow-on thing was a tenner, and it was the kind of thing I could give it to her for Christmas, and then each kind of birthday or a special treat, you know, chuck, chuck another tenner in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But be, be, Skylanders, I think the start pack is, uh, so it's f- f- £60, I think it is. And that's like more expensive is, than a normal game. The, the star pack so much. I mean, it's, it's, it's a receiver, isn't it? It's a little thing that you Yeah, you, you get the pad and you get two of the figures and you get the game. So I, I think £60, there's an argument. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's, there's an argument. Why and then the, the, the figures are a little bit more. Exce- why do I have to buy extra accessories to play on a console I've already got? I mean, that annoys, it doesn't annoy you when you get a console and you kind of think, oh my God, look, that Wii or that PlayStation or this Xbox, this isn't like a console specific moment. This is just one of those moments where it's like, you look at the price of the console and you go, cool, it's that amount. Yeah, let's, let's say £200. That console is £200. And then you go, ooh, well, I'm going to need another pad. Ooh, well, I'm going to need that additional accessory. Ooh, and then of course, I'm going to need another game because one game just really yeah. isn't, isn't really enough. Ooh, I'm going to need, I don't know, something. And then you walk out the shop and you've spent 330 and you're like, where did the only £200 go? Do you, want to, do you want to hear my old man impersonation? Back, oh, God, the, back the, the, the Wii was the worst. Numchuck. Yeah. Classic controller. But, the, the, oh. Speaking of Nintendo, back in my day, you could get a Nintendo with a gun, two control pads, and two games for, I think it was 250 yeah. which is, I think that's what I got for my birthday or Christmas when I got my but first Nintendo. That was Nintendo. all in one thing, wasn't it? That and it was, yeah, it was like two games, a gun, and two control pads and the console. It's like, well, I'm set here for a good, you know, six months at, at that time. And, you know, when you took it forever to beat Mario and Duck on and stuff. But now, but then again, PlayStation Plus, but then, I don't know. It's, it, it is expensive, but I think £100 and £30 for each expansion is a right piddle take right yeah, there. I was, a, what? A- even my little boy went, I don't think so. And he doesn't even understand the value of money. Yet. He's just a tiny boy. And even he was like, what, hundred pounds? You could buy a car for that. And such stupid statements as that. But it's not his fault. He's a little kid. But he still understood the hundred pounds ridiculous. Would you like some more Doctor Who Lego related news? Even though like, like Lego Dimensions well, I might, is a little I might, Yeah, I mean, Doctor Who's in, uh, Pete from BBC who comes on the Doctor Who Legacy show often talks about it. But yeah, we cover it, yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, they uh, announced- no spoilers for the new series. Otherwise, I'll throw it's it out. It's no spoilers. It's- okay. It's actual toys, Lego. They, uh, from what I see, it was just announced today. From what I can see, uh, Lego Doctor Who set has finally come out. I think they, I think there was like a system where people voted for the next set, and I think the last one was Ghostbusters, and this one is the Doctor Who Lego set. And the little boy in me is going, "Wow, that looks really cool!" But I'm not going to sit here and play with Doctor Who Lego. Am I? It's just, it's just. But still, it looks cool. It's got three doc- four doctors, from what I can see, Amy, and. Daleks, you got to have Daleks. Is Amy so, yeah. have yellow legs? Because obviously Amy normally has her legs out, but are they yellow? No, they're black with a skirt. So black tights. I don't think she's painted her legs black. 
Yeah, like they could it could be a back level because like obviously when you're young you can appreciate I don't have a Lego but you can I have seen it done you can appreciate Lego on the if you're a kid you can do the whole I'm going to build it unbuild it make other things out of it have adventures with it play it on the floor leave someone on the foot get dad to tread on it by accident listen to the swear words he says yada 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 yeah if you're an adult you can do the whole I'm going to make it as a collectible and I'm going to place it on the shelf where it will stay for the better part of the next six years until someone knocks it off. And then, or, and then treads until, on a piece of it on the floor and then the rest of it goes on there. Until said person's about half goes, what are you doing? You, you know, that, that's toys. That, if someone it, wants to be with you, then they should accept that you have interests. I'm going to play this episode of Spud Alley back to my beloved and uh, just look at her. Like, see, told you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, else you can, what else you can disagree? Why don't you bring her on? We could have, you know, a debate with her. What did you She's expect? <laughs> what did you expect when you were getting with me? Exactly. She she knew. She knew. Um, but yeah, I there's there's people at work who are starting putting uh, like men, fully grown men, and a couple Hang of on, women. Wait, who- sorry, I don't obviously like to obviously mention the chat on screen chat here too much because obviously this is a podcast and some of you probably are, um, you know, not not in the kind of chat. But there's a we have, we have a Twitch chat who are listening to us live here, and someone's just said Emmy Emmy Scarmer's just said my body's ready for the Lego Doctor Who. Hmm. Blimey. <laughs> well, she she definitely likes Lego. She she's so ready. She really likes. She loves Lego. Lego. I don't know what she's going to build out the bases, but what blimey. She do with the bo- I don't want to know. You so can please carry on because I need to get that this this out of my head. Yeah, you should do. Uh, so, yeah, the people at work, like adults, are putting like figures now on their desks. So I think it's becoming more. It, you know, it's not so much taboo if taboo is tabo, the right thing. It's like, oh, you're a kid, you play with toys. But I think it's just like little ornament pieces now for nerds. It's good. Well, I want to put my I want to put my Homer Buddha on my which you got me from the loot crate on my on my desk. Like I just keep forgetting to take cool. it to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got you, you got to take it in, especially my, with my, my my Carnage mug is already in work, and my genius idea of no one ever nicking my mug because it's now a Carnage mug is is working. Cool. Has anyone paid any compliments to your Carnage mug? Um, they've played comments. Is that the same thing? It, yeah, it always yeah. starts with what the, what the hell is that with that, and then <laughs> yeah. depending on how how many kids are around, the middle bit is different. Yeah, you could start with heck or f. Yeah, or, yeah. 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 Just what depends. the heck, in son of a? B- anyway, um, yeah, I've got all my stuff here at my desk from from, from the Luke Crate stuff. But yeah, it's cool. I'm I'm looking at it, and my the ten year old in me is going, well, I wouldn't mind to let go, Weeping Angel. That would be quite cool. And it doesn't cost 100 quid. Actually, it might do, don't I? Anyway, moving on. I'd like to talk about the um, Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Hell in the Cell match coming up. Oh, wrestling. Because for, for, for wrestling fans, um, Undertaker, or sorry, for non-wrestling fans, let me just fill you in on this, Undertaker is one of the longest-serving wrestlers of all time, one of the most popular wrestlers of all time, one of the... Uh, most respected wrestlers of all time, and actually over the last 10 years or so, probably one of the highest match quality wrestlers, <laughs> like one of the most enjoyable to watch. He's facing Brock Lesnar, who is one of the most famous men on the planet in the kind of sporting slash wrestling world. He's a legitimate UFC champion, which is like real fighting, and he's a multiple-time WWE champion. And WWE have used him very, very sparingly and kept his value. So basically what you've got here is you've got one of the the biggest wrestlers of all time, in terms of popularity and fame, versus one of the biggest wrestlers of international inter-sport fame going head-to-head. And this is their third match. This is like, this is an say, well, probably more than third, but in recent times, this is their third match. They had a yeah, big third, thing at Undertaker. Third at match since Brock's comeback, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Third big thing at WrestleMania where the Undertaker streak was broken. Then they had one big rematch at SummerSlam, and now, now... They're having the big showdown, you know, the final match. They've actually said that Paul Heyman has gone on record to say this will be the last match these two ever had. And for both of them, this will, this will be one of the last matches they have kind of full stop because both of them are kind of approaching the end of their careers and so on. So, yada, yada. so this is the showdown to end an epic feud between two epic things. And, yes, I'm really building this up for a reason because I want to say that this is such an important, powerful, <laughs> exciting, tense, must-see match. And they're completely cooking up the build of it. Oh, what have they done? Have I missed something? I must have missed something. Tell me. The the, the announcement for the match. You know how how would you how would you expect Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar and Hell in a Cell to be put together? You know how would you expect that that to happen? I would expect uh, Triple H to come down the ring on Raw first thing in the middle of the ring and go. He's got an important announcement or something like that. 
or or some sort of dramatic pull apart, pull apart, or one of them being like, "I challenge you to a blah blah blah," and the other person going, "I'm not going to do it." Helen's out. Well, you know, something, something dramatic, something live, something you know, like you know, you know, some 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 sort of interactive announcement or some sort of challenge. Yeah. You know, yeah. Brock Lesnar comes yeah. down and says, "I got a challenge for you, Undertaker." You know, something that makes it kind of a tense thing that builds it out over a couple of weeks. You know, how's this match going to happen? Why is it going to be set up? Yada 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 yada. But instead, what they did is they had a small video package at SummerSlam going uh, about one of the no small video package at Night of Champions going. Oh yeah, Undertaker's going to be facing Brock Lesnar in a Hell in a Cell. Yeah, and and it was the end of what seemed like a live event tour for Brock Lesnar, wasn't it? It's was like the Brock Lesnar tour. Yeah, and it was like yeah. Beast. First he's going to Pittsburgh, then he's going to New York City, then he's going to this, and then he's fighting the Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell. And I was like, what? Yeah, it's like, oh, sorry, that's uh, yeah. one of the biggest matches of the last ten years, and you've just put it at the end of a video package in a little list. It was like an episode of Spud Alley with you. But, but what? <laughs> you like this? Oh, that! I thought you meant like anticlimactic, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that would have been mean. That would, be that would have been horrible. Oh, good lord! So I, I welled up there. But yes, um, I do love lists. But even if I was doing it, I would have done a really like short list and then done that as the last entry to the list, so to get as much impact from that announcement as possible. It My would, shopping list is good. But yeah, exactly. It, but it, that that's the good word: impact. The, the, the announcement of this match needed to be done in such a way that it had a massive impact that made the wrestling fans, and crucially for them, even the non-wrestling fans go, I've got to see that. This is the showdown. This is the one. This is the thing. And nah, they've kind of been basically just kind of gone, oh, yeah, there's going to be another Undertaker Brock match. So why should I get Why should I get And I, I think the, 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 the on the same show, you know, to take away from it as well, they've got Kane in a world title match. What's that about? Oh, God. What is that about? I know he's with Seth and Seth's awesome, but still, what's that about? Kane. Oh, no, 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 no. Did you see Brock against, um, which kind of feeds onto the point as well, because they barely mentioned it, apart from at the end, uh, Brock against Big Show? No. All right. I mean, literally, they just acted like the Undertaker match wasn't happening. It was like, oh, it's all about these two. And I know it was about those two at that time. And normally I moan about them talking about other things during a match. But it, like you said, it's a, such a big deal that could have hyped it. And it's a proper pay-per-view. They mm. could have hyped it a little bit. I think they mentioned it after the match and went, oh, and Brock's there now. He's going to fight the other two. You know, that throwaway line. But They do. I mean, WWE, I mean... <sighs> Wrestling fans moan an awful lot about WWE, and I go a lot of, a lot of time onto wrestling websites, and I think it irritates me sometimes that the wrestling websites often seem to be more critical of wrestling than they are praising it, you know, to the point of view you kind of go, well, well why are you watching it then? Um, so I want to be more positive, and I like to be optimistic and stuff, and, and if there's anything WWE knows how to do, it's, it's marketing. You know, they know how to push things and make you buy it and make you want to buy it and make you go, oh, I'm not sure I can actually live any more existence without that object, whatever it is. <laughs> But here, it nope. almost seems like. I mean, am I exaggerating? I mean, is this not one of the biggest matches in the last ten years? I mean, is is this not colossal? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it comes from the biggest shock that I can actually think of, mm. apart from Brett Sean Screwjob thing. Mm. That was the Undertaker losing at WrestleMania. I mean, everyone, including me and you, including my son, all went, "Yeah, Undertaker's going to win blatantly." It mm. just was blatant. There's yeah. like no way. And then when it happened, like you, like you said, that could have been. And then the, the, the SummerSlam thing that was well done. You know, popped up in the, the the other match and then the big pull of art brawl and everyone's going crazy. But this one was literally like, oh yeah, there you go. There you go. They, they could have, yeah. We'll it's, it's a, a bit silly. Show now, final one. Watch it if you want. Anyway, so, we'll, and they've only got two weeks left to to sort it out. And because I believe the match is coming up in two weeks, and then but Brock Lesnar on Raw was spending his time faffing about the Big Show again. Stop faffing yeah, about yeah. the Big Show. Faff. Faff. Go, that could be moan. That, that wasn't really a conversation starter more than just like I'd like to moan. It's all right. This is this is it's not just to just discuss topics, it's also to vent, like I did about minions last week. It's fine. It's true. You did vent about minions, you didn't like me. Uh, I would like to see Brock Lesnar against the minions. There we go, just killing them all, just grabbing them, twisting their little heads off. Um would you like some computer game news? This is hot off the press news that just happened a few hours ago. Not oh, really. Investigative investigative journalism from Spud. <laughs> I travelled to Ubisoft head offices. I broke really? in. I saw no, no, no. I didn't really do that. Uh, but yeah, literally, Far Cry Prime Primal. I nearly got it wrong. Primal has been announced for coming out in February next year. And so Far Cry Primal is this just random chucking in of adjectives and just seeing what sticks. <laughs> <laughs> um, none, I, I, none of those I, words go together in a sentence 
Well, let me tell you the setup of the game. And I'm a Brit. A bit, a Brit. <laughs> no, I want I'm to talk about Brit. linguists. Words. We talked about this last week. I like words. Far Cry Primal is not a sentence or a phrase or a noun. It's it's meaningless. But surely if you know the background of it, it might change your mind. Okay. Okay, it's about F1 racing, right? And the main character... No, it's not. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you're a... Not prehistoric, obviously, but you're a hunter at the very just as we became humans, I think, from the ancestors of what, what we came from, if you believe that kind of thing, which I do. Um, and yeah, and it's... Is that a very long way of saying you're a Neanderthal? No, no, no. You're, you're definitely human, but it's just, it's very early man, kind of. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you're hunting down, there's like woolly mammoths in it and saber-toothed tigers. And I got all excited when I watched the trailer and I was like, ooh, and then I thought, hang on a minute. There's no guns because... There's no guns <laughs> unless someone goes, I will make this machine gun out of wood and flint and dung. Um, and the last game, one of the, the most annoying parts for me is when you went into that weird spirit world when you had no guns and you had like arrows and stuff. I didn't like that as much as the rest of the game. So now I'm actually thinking, Ugh. everyone else online is going crazy. Oh my God, fuck right. It's an original idea that hasn't really been done much before. And I don't think there's any dinosaurs in it. Oh. Which is, it, well, Cause, if cause it's historically the, you know, the famous Turok, which was famously terrible, but everyone loved it. I don't know, but I think F- Far Cry with dinosaurs would be cool. But if it's historically accurate, <laughs> from there wouldn't be any dinosaurs in it. And there's no dinosaurs in the trailer. The, 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 the beginning of the trailer is like you're hunting this woolly mammoth and then you kill the woolly mammoth and then a saber-toothed tiger jumps out and then he goes, Far Cry. And then you're walking through the woods with like a torch and then another tribesman come out. At that bit, I thought you were going to come to a clearing and there's going to be a T-Rex there, but there wasn't. There was just a guy with a spear. I was like, oh man, there better be dinosaurs in it. So and a rocking like the, the, the enemy going to be like a really well-spoken caveman that like sharpens his swords and kind of talks about insanity <laughs> while, you know, trying to like or not because it hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> But the other day I was on the phone and your character goes, what? I mean, I was calling over the hill and, and they keep, oh, and one of them's got a watch on. They could on purpose put loads of things that were wrong with the time. So one of them's got like jeans on. And- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for it. I'm going to vote. I mean, I, don't, I haven't huh? seen the trailer, but I'm just going to say it like, like one of the things we've objected to quite a few times on Spad Addict is games that just put out yearly iterations that are just like, here's a graphics patch on that, or here's another kind of level pack that isn't really taking it further. And, and what you want from a sequel is something, and we said this with kind of Fallout, what you want from a sequel is more of the same with a difference, with an, a significant improvement that makes you realise that this is a new game and it's worth you putting down your 40 to £50, pounds, whatever it is. And, you know, Far Cry is a big open world roaming adventure with numeral side, numerous side missions and things to do. And it sounds like that what they've got there is something that's going to be significantly different in a different time zone with a different set of weapons. I mean, my head's kind of wandering a little bit because obviously a big car Far Cry is kind of going, is getting different kinds of weapons. So and vehicles. Kind of going, is, was it going to be a slightly pointier stick or like... <laughs> yeah, see, see what I mean? It, this it, it ball is made this out of oak, but this ball is made out of elm. I've got a stone knife. <laughs> I, I think very, it's going to be... very shiny stone. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be limited. I mean, you, you, again, vehicles. You're going to jump on top of a woolly mammoth, no doubt, because they've got that mechanic from Far Cry 4. Ride a tiger? I mean, maybe they could ride all the... A pterodactyl? Animals. Oh, no, there's no dinosaurs. Giant big eagle. Giant eagle? No, that's... <laughs> away eagle! No, uh, I, I, I think it might be a bit of a letdown. I think it might be a stopgap game. If they've just taken some weapons out and changed the map around a bit uh, up until Far Cry 5... Because it's only been a year break, which is better than Call of Duty's and think, your Assassin's Creed. Think, think of it this way. If that's the, it forces the game's designers to, to really think about what they're going to do with the game. And rather than just being kind of like, here's, here's Far Cry 5 on another island, maybe, you know, let's make it, you know, a, a Asian rather than African or vice versa, whatever you want to do. It. You know, rather than just being like another re, kind of reskinned version with a bit of additional gameplay, by setting it somewhere completely different in terms of time zone, the game's designers have now got to go, right, so... What elements from the original Far Cry games can we bring in? How are we going to bring them in? What can we use it with? What creatures? I think it makes you think. I think it makes everything just feel 
new and fresh. I'm excited about this. You've sold me on this game by trying to unsell me this game. <laughs> I've sold you with my negativity. I'll be a great car, car salesman. Oh, I wouldn't buy that car. The fuel uses up fuel and the tyres keep going down. We change them. There's something wrong with the wheels and the clutch. Oh, yeah, I buy it. What? I'm telling you, it's a death trap. Here's my money. Take my money. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with this one. We'll, we'll find out in February, but I... I, the thing is, it looks like the main weapon is going to be a bow and arrow, which is which is cool. I like bow and arrow. But what happened arrow with most me? Of the way through Far Cry. Exactly, me too. This is what happened, right? So sneaking, sneaking through. Yeah, yeah. Woods. Sneak, sneak, I, sneak, I, sneak, sneak. Ah, alarm! Run! <laughs> Mark everyone in the camp, right? Marked everyone. Right, take out one guy, bow and arrow. <laughs> Got him. Lovely. Next guy. Here we go. Bob's your uncle. Got him right in the head. Third guy sees me, pull out a machine gun, try and shoot everyone. That, that's the way it always happens. Yeah, and some freaker runs off to the alarm and you have to abandon your cover yeah. to like run like a madman after him towards the alarm. Yeah. And everyone sees you going, hey, that's that guy. <laughs> that's that and then guy. you pull that's out a rocket guy. launcher. That's the guy we're all trying to kill running next to the guy alarm. Yeah, and then you're going crazy. So in this one, if someone spots me, what am I going to pull out? A sharp stick or a stone or a slingshot or something? No. I'm wait, just, just going to be like that. Explosive stone. Explosive stone. <laughs> Defies logic. But how did you get the explosives? How did you invent the explosives and then put them in the stone? I don't understand. Now, if you're a time traveller... They could have like an alien warship land. Yeah. Times ...that has some guns. Well, well I, I, I'm hoping there's some sort of twist and maybe you're a man out of time or something. And then you, you've got a ray gun. A ray gun with dinosaurs. A ray gun against cavemen. That's just, that's just unfair. I think, yeah, add ray guns to most things and it makes it better. Like, if you had a ray gun in the Great British Bake Off, you're telling me that wouldn't be as good, if not better. What, would you cook things with it? Like, no, no, I think the, um, who's the uh, the older lady? What's her name? Expert of Great British Bake Off. Mary Berry. If you gave her a ray gun and whenever th- anything was too soggy in the centre of the cake, I've seen a couple of clips and she always goes on about soggy, she'd, shoot them with a ray gun and they'd disintegrate and that's how they would eliminate the people instead of voting them off that, you've just basically described that like Doctor Who TV station parody where all the guns oh, I did didn't I yeah the, the weakest you've, link you've just <laughs> seriously proposed that <laughs> uh, and you could bring the boy points into it and everything could be fine mm. hey. cool have you got anything else you would like to bring up for a discussion I'm running out <laughs> <laughs> you said we had some questions we did. Oh, hang on. Before that, this is another thing. Um, an analyst has come out uh, last week, Michael Patcher, and he said, this will be the very last cycle of consoles. And after this, it will be tablets and it will be PCs and consoles will go out to pasture and they will be taken around the back of the shed and shot. Now, how many times have we heard this and why do you think it keeps popping up? Um... Because I, I remember well, nice for thing starting heard the doom and gloom for lots of things. I mean, they were talking about the end of PC gaming. They did, yeah, a few years ago. I remember that. And you know, I didn't get particularly concerned about it because I didn't really see that happening. But a lot of experts were saying PC games weren't going anymore. And I was beginning to be a bit like, oh, will the latest releases come to PC? And because you know, there are a few games that never did, um, like Batman. <laughs> yeah, like Batman, Red Dead Redemption, you know, that, that, that kind of era. That was when they were talking about PC games dying. And then, and then they've, got, they've talked about handhelds dying, but now they're still handhelds. And then they've talked about consoles dying, and they've talked about Nintendo dying, they've talked about Sega dying. Gaming continues. It's like the, you know, it's like the, the, the rad roach of, um, of, of, the, of, the, of the gaming world. It will survive in some form. They, they will always be, I, I don't know about consoles in particular. I, I, I think consoles will survive. But what there will be is there will be a market for casual gaming and there will be a market for serious gaming and there will be a market for um, something that your teenage, teenager slash young child can use to play serious games that doesn't require an intricate knowledge of PCs. And surely that, that, that niche has to be a console. Not everyone is going to want to use a PC because of the complicate the, you know, the, the, the understanding you have to have to be able to use it, basically. Plus the fact that a PC doesn't really work in a living room. Um, mm. Although, I mean, I, although that's, I, you know, you are, the, 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 the breakdown between PC and tablet and console is, is thinning, you know, with the transferability and things. Well, I cast my mind back when I read this and I was trying to think how many times I heard it. And I think the first time I heard it was just before the PS2 came out. I think after the PS1, and that was the boom, and I remember reading some sort of magazine 
some expert, normally analysts about markets, they always make these things. And they were like, that's the high point there. The PS1, it sold so many, that's it, that's it, blah, blah, blah. Mm. That, that's it. The next one will go down and go down and that's it, blah, blah, blah. Then the PS2 came out and was the most successful selling console of all time. And it kind of blew out of the water. Now, the Wii. Uh, yep, and then the Wii. And then after the Wii, they went, right, that's it. And the, you know, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were quite successful, but not matching up. And you kind of thought, okay. But now the PS4, if it's on, if it stays on this trajectory, it will be the most successful selling console of all yeah, time again. Say, isn't the PS4 sold really, really well? Yeah, it's like, it, 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 it's beating all their previous consoles up to this point in their life cycle. So if it keeps on with the momentum as it should do, I mean, it's not slowing down. It's, you know, it's evening out a bit, but it should become the biggest selling console. And then in an era where we're, we're just, you know, like people are buying phones for like 400 quid, there's 300 quid for a games console. It's not really, you know, out of the world. But um, I think there'll be a, a, a point where everything will hook up and anyone will be able to cross their games. You know, I think, yeah, but it's I wouldn't be surprised if you end up getting some sort of system whereby, like, your phone and your console and your PC are all linked up and you get a game and you can actually play it on all three, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, we kind of got that with the PlayStation thing at the moment. So we've got the PlayStation TV, which is on some TVs, Samsung TVs, yeah. and now we're getting between PS4 and PS Vita and PS3, you're getting cross-save. So if I'm playing Shovel Knight, for example, that, that does the feature very well with hardly any problems. It's just one press of a button. And, you know, you know, you're playing on your PS4, you've got to go out. Shovel Knight, very good retro platformer. I strongly recommend it to you. He's got a shovel when he's a knight. That's that's it. That's the it's, you jump around, you hit enemies. It's a platformer, very much like old retro Mario's. Why Someone's blade. Why isn't he got a sword? Why is he not a sword knight? Because then it'd be called sword knight, and I'd be maybe a bit too violent. But you're you're getting you're getting you're, you're sidetracking me, damn it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So if I want to, I can cross save it, go on the bus, and I've got my game where I just left off. So it, it, we're kind of there already, but. I just don't like it when analysts come out and make these big sweeping statements and they keep getting proven wrong and wrong and wrong. But then again, we're talking about it and I even mentioned his name. So maybe that's why they keep doing it. I think probably though, it's one of those things again, where like one person says, well, this might happen. And then some news journalist goes, Oh, let's turn that into a headline. You that's know, it. Like, Console like games when, are dead. It's like when Jeremy Corbyn breathes and then that turns into the sun headline the next day, Jeremy Corbyn bans oxygen. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn did not breathe in and out at the correct pace. Therefore, he disrespects the Queen or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. He, bre- he breathed in and out too slowly and therefore he's against, you know, fast cars. <laughs> he wants to get rid of all nuclear weapons and let everyone have guns and other yeah, but, stuff. I, mean, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe analysts are making money out of this kind of thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's more of a case of. Because you know what you get? You know, you get. You get I, I was, I'm reading about There's a guy called Peter Singer in Ethics. And he's he's come up with a theory, a way of making decisions known as preference utilitarianism. And he did this reasonably long lecture, reasonably long talk about ways of making decisions and when a person can be classed as alive and when a person should be deemed valuable or not to value the sanctity of life. You know, a really kind of deep, well thought out theory. And you can agree with him and you can disagree with him, yada, yada, yada. But it was a well thought out, detailed argument. But at one point, he made the case that. The older a per, the more kind of adult a person is, the more valuable we should kind of see them because of their kind of impact on society. The people that rely on them, the people that they rely on, you know, they're thoroughly integrated. They're known yada yada. And the younger a person is, going all the way back to an embryo, the less valuable a person is. And so he makes this kind of point at one point that we should see, uh, we should see a newborn baby as s- s- less valuable than an adult. And this this is part of a huge lecture um, mm. of a well thought out theory. But of course. The headline, and this wasn't like a main main reported news thing, but you know the thing that all the textbooks was like was like, you know, Peter Singer hates babies, and it's like yeah. that's not <laughs> what he was saying. That's not what he's saying. And that, exactly, that's that's, journal, that's that's I think when journalism is at its worst, when they try and they, when they take something that's not a story and try and make a story out of it. I mean, story, real story. I mean, isn't there not enough real stories in the world? You know, ISIS blows up historical monuments, you know, massive problems with um, poor immigrants dying dying in the oceans, you know, uh, you know, presidential elections, blah, 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 blah. You know, there, there's lots of real stories around. So why do you have to kind of take someone out of context and go, look, that's it. Yeah, and, and, and moving, yeah, going back to Corbyn, that's exactly what happened when he said about, um, remember there was all the headlines saying Corbyn says it was a tragedy that Bin Laden was killed. And yeah. it was like, oh, and it, the actual quote was, it's a tragedy he was killed and not brought to justice. <laughs> they just chopped off the end of it. 
<laughs> straight away they just no he wanted but Aladdin to live he didn't say that though but everyone was going around he was like in all the papers on the news and oh geez. I wonder if journalists know they do it like I wonder if it's like yeah a, they just want to create a conversation and get people selling or listening or watching don't they maybe, maybe it's the fault of the kind of like most things are kind of the, comp, the it's like one of those necessity like it, it, journalists are in competition with each other so they're constantly looking for that that story that will make them better than the journalist next to them and therefore they end up kind of going down that path capitalism man capitalism man yeah man i mean no man i'm not before any journalists are watching i'm not suggesting communism so please don't make the headline tomorrow you know local (laughs) teacher what reverts to communism live on air also supposed supports incest i didn't say that (laughs) no i didn't say that either i didn't say that no wants to create explosive stone in game no i didn't say that Right. That was quite a good rant. I, I feel I've let that off my chest. Here's good. Is a, a, a question for you. Um, I, w- I uh, as everyone knows here, I, I, I'm a teacher, and um, we teach lots of subjects in school. You know, I'm, I'm a high school teacher, and I think the kids have something like eleven different subjects. And as they get older, they can specialise more and more um, and choose less and less. So the idea is they have a very wide curriculum when they're, you know, say. 11 years old and then they choose a little bit more when they kind of get to more kind of 13 years old and they specialize even more when they get to GCSE and they kind of reduce it back to kind of seven and then you get to a level and you reduce it even more to back kind of three or four and then you get to university and you tend to reduce it to either one or two depending if it's a, a dual honors and I think the system is is good I think I think the system is good I think that's how it should be you know you give everyone opportunity to learn a little bit about everything and then the the, the kid and the child as they grow up can choose their own specialism um my question is this do you think there are any subjects that are taught in school that shouldn't be? Or conversely, do you think there's any subjects that aren't talk, taught in school that should discuss? Right. Um, right, no. I think all the lessons have a use. And if you asked me this when I was in school, um, I would have said, Ori, what the hell? But now, as I've got older, I find the whole thing like you know philosophy re what people believe etc etc i find that really fascinating mm. and i i geek out on it all the time and <laughs> you know if you if you look on my my phone all of my podcasts it's either gaming or movie related comic related and then out of the blue it's science and philosophy and <laughs> debates normally against some high-end atheist against some high-end best card Muslim in hearthstone <laughs> and who's playing the next doctor who companion and how did the world begin yeah, and, and then going to, is there a God and why isn't there a God and why is my God burning your God? And, you know, th- th- all that stuff fascinates me. So even that subject, again, ask a 14-year-old me, oh, no, it's boring. Oh, I hate Miss, whatever, I can't say her name <laughs> because you know the one I'm talking about because we went to the same high school. <laughs> but, um, that that, was, the, that think- was the only lesson we shared. Yes, and you brought a pen. Me, me oh, and, we might have said this before. Me and Spud were, didn't know each other in high school, though we went to the same high school in the same year and we shared one lesson and apparently I borrowed your pencil. And that's when I noticed him. And I said, he's going to be mine one day. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But I think incest, I think they should definitely teach some sort of modern life skills to to kids in in some sort of lesson, be it it some sort of technology information lesson, things like how to open up a bank account and stuff like that. I mean, you could put some responsibility with the parents, but I think... I I agree with you. The problem is, is that they... What tends to happen in, in in a lot of schools, and I'm not necessarily talking about my, my own school, I'm just saying what tends to happen in a lot of schools is that it gets all, all that kind of stuff, how to open a bank account, how to get a mortgage, how to do taxes, yada, 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 all gets put into a subject called PSE or PSHE. When, when I was at school, it was personal, so, personal, social, and I think it started as personal, social education, but it now actually stands for, I think, personal, social, and health economics i think they've now even taken the word education out of it um and actually the, when you look at the curriculum of it um it, it's not bad there's some stuff there that i personally i'm not not quite too into but all of those topics those kind of life skills topics are kind of there things like you know sex being the big one and mm. then you know money skills democracy you know how to vote how our government system works you know, all those things are there um but here's the problem in most schools what happens is that lesson is then is then taught by that child's form tutor rather than a PSE teacher. So you get some teacher that's like a, a science teacher or an RE teacher like I am or a maths teacher or a French teacher, blah, blah, yada, yada. And then once a week they have this PSE lesson where they're supposed to teach democracy to their 
to their form. And the teacher isn't, the teacher might kind of have that knowledge, but they're not actually a specialist teacher of that particular subject. And by and large, most teachers then don't do a very good job. And I don't think that's the teacher's fault at all because it's not their specialism. It's not what they're trained to do. It's not what they're, you know, their ex- expertise in. The kids then hate it because it's not taught particularly well. And then it just ends up becoming a big kind of mess of, oh God, I've got PSA, PSHE. So I, I, I agree with you. It's really vital. I think it, I think it, they, that a school should employ a few PSE teachers who are very good at teaching that subject and make it the important subject that it should be. I, I, I completely agree, but it's probably the, the worst time. I was just listening to the radio this morning, and it was talking about a, a, like a crisis of you know, lack of teachers in in, in the United Kingdom. So. I don't think that's going to happen soon if they haven't got any teachers for the, the core subjects, as you would, your science, your maths, and your English. So I, I, I agree with you. There. I might be wrong, but as far as I understand it, I think there's shortage of teachers in certain subjects. Like I think some subjects have got way too many, like history I think is oversubscribed. Because basically mm. anyone that studies history at university, and there's a lot of them, then kind of goes, great, what can I do with a history degree? And of course, nothing other than teach history. Um, or, or run the country, apparently. Um, but yeah, so, you know, lots of people who study history go on to teach history, but if people study science, they tend to go and work at work, go to, you know, chemistry, fact, chemistry, yeah. you know, and go and make millions. They don't kind of go to that kind of thing. So uh, it's certain subjects. Um, I mean, PSC, I don't know if PSC would have teachers going for it. Cause I mean, anyone that did things like politics degrees or philosophy degrees might have it. I don't know. It's very important though. I mean, just, just if you covered sex and credit, how credit works. Because so many young people fall into the credit trap. Oh, I get a credit card. Oh, £2,000. Yeah. Oh, no, I now owe £4,000. How does that work? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's true, though. And then they, you know, the, the sex thing talks for itself, really. It causes all kinds of trouble. It's a good system, though, the whole, you know, teach loads of different things. And, and I think, I don't know what it's like in other countries, and it'd be nice to kind of you know, import some other, some other people into our, uh, into our chat and ask them. But, you know, I think the British education system is good. You know, you've got, if I can do it off the top of my head, you've got, one foreign lang- one modern foreign language, and I hate modern foreign languages, but I still think it's at least a taster it should be on the curriculum. Um, RE and philosophy, science, uh, which is often double science, English, English language, and English literature, and geography, and history, and music, and drama, and ICT, which has recently been revamped to not just be like spreadsheets and stuff, but have actually been like building computers and understanding code and things like that, which I think is awesome. And... Then when you get to GCSE, you've got lots of other, other options like photography and media and psychology PE. and sociology. I feel like I've missed the subject. PE. Sports. PE. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, can't think pretty, of anything else. That's, that's, that's a broad base. That's good. I like it. Hmm? Go, go education. Go education. Learning stuff is cool. Anyway. But again. We have 10 minutes left of the show. What, what, we should, you should have got a couple of questions in. We have got two questions that I could find. Um, everyone, if you would like to send some more questions in, because obviously this week we haven't rambled on so much to, we, we've forgotten the time and then went, okay, we have to go by and re- without anything. So please ask it's anything of us within reason. <laughs> Let me just do a, a list of uh, all, all the reasons you should send your questions. Yeah, but please send your questions in. So the first question is from our dear friend, Mr. Pix. The golf rematch avoiding Mr. Pix himself. I hope he's listening. You golf coward. Um, he want, would like to know what retro game or game series would we like to see come back? That's an awesome question. That is an awesome question. Well done. You might be, you know, jamming at golf, but that was a good question. Mm. You first. Or, or do you want me to go first? Because I thought of an answer because I read the question. Go for it. Streets of Rage. Oh, I was thinking Double Dragon. But that's effectively oh. the same. That's, that's the same principle. Go for it. You, oh, well, you, you, you think of that one. Okay, let, let me explain why. Because... Could you imagine a side-scrolling, you know, like side, not proper 2D, but like Streets of Rage where you can move up and down, but with proper Street Fighter mechanics. So you can do the combos and the dragon punches, not necessarily with Street Fighter characters, Streets of Rage characters, but it's it's that level of in-depth fighting, but multiple characters with smaller energy bars. Goes along, tells a cool story. I would love that, especially with today's graphics and sound and, you know, stories are getting better and everything else. And you get to punch loads of people. And you can make that really funny noise that you made in Squash the other day. It sounded just like Streets of Rage. So yeah, my, my oh, answer is um, Streets of Rage. I, love, I used to oh, love that no, clip. So no, rah, rah. Rah. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but it sounded just oh, like uh, That's it. Uh, uh, something like that. Uh, uh, the amount I used to play that, that even the first level of Streets of Rage 2, because the boss at the end was so easy to punch. So I used to do that weird combo where you just keep punching them and finish with a little dragon punch thing. I used to love that game so much. 
They did a good did, one did called... Did we play Streets of Rage 2 the other day? Like, not the other day, but like a couple of months ago, at my place. I think it was about a year and a half ago, yeah. It, it, it was on the PS3. Time, time goes fast when you're old. It does for, for people, people our age. Um, we did. It's fun. I, I like it. And they, they, there's been other games like that. Like, you know, you, you had your Turtles in Time, your Turtles Arcade game. I think there was like a really good one. Um, uh, I don't know the genre has disappeared. Maybe, maybe it's been replaced by first-person shooters. Yeah, I, I think each thing gets its day in the sun, doesn't it? So you had a period where everything was 2D platformers. Then you had lots of those scrolling and beat-em-ups. Then you had 3D platformers, and they just vanished. And and then it's first-person shooters now. Everything's first-person and first-person now. So what is any retro games you can think of or series that we have come back? I've been teasing it in my head while you've been kind of talking and stuff, because most, especially with the rise of indie games, most mm-hmm. genres are now still around in one way or the other because there, there was a period about five years ago where uh, graphic based kind of point and click adventures had completely disappeared. Because I, I, if you'd asked me this question five years ago, I'd have gone Monkey Island, Dare the Tentacle, you know, those kind of like yeah. comedy click adventures. Full, I'd, I'd be like, where the hell front. are they? But now I think all the Telltale game stuff. Yes. And there are, are you, have you played Walking Dead season one? No, but I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm aware oh, that they're around, but that, oh, that, that so kind good. of genre has been updated, modernised, and has come back with a vengeance. So huzzah! Yeah. Um, which I guess really only leaves the genre, which is um, you know, you are in a room. On your left, there is a box. There are three exits: one to the right, and one to the <laughs> left. Te- text-based adventures. What do you do? <laughs> I uh, press F one to go through left door. You have died. You have met a giant dragon. He has bent you over and killed you. I don't know why you, you had to bend him over why first. Why did you so. bend him over? It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Can I go back now and reduce and go, go to the right door? But yeah, no, I, I don't know. Well, maybe you kind of got that a little bit with that passport game. Uh, was it called? The one on Steam. I don't think it's hit consoles yet. I played it. I loved it. Oh, and you played one, it. Um passports and you have to make decisions and it's all tech, basically. Yes, yes, I know the one. Uh, it's like... Glory to Eric Stocksier or something. Yeah, it's you're like kind of Russian-y kind yeah. of oh, situation. God, I don't know what it was called. Someone on the chat will tell us. But yes, I remember. Pass, paper, papers, please. Papers, please. Papers, please. That's it. Well done. Yes. So that's kind of maybe that. I mean, it's not coming back using today's tech, getting a proper relaunch of a series. But um, yeah, I think like what are the what are the games that I played for hours and hours and hours when I was a kid? I mean, platformers. What do you think? You're saying you think 3D platformers have disappeared? Well, you had you had your Mario sixty four that really kicked it off, and then you had your uh, Crash Bandicoot and Banjo and Kazooie's, and you know the, some of them it, the other way, like just... Rayman, which was three D, has now gone back to being two D. But I think it's mm. better for doing so. Oh yes, definitely. Oh, the last one was just amazing, and the one before that. But I mean, can you think of any modern three D platformers? Oh, I can't. I think there was one called something. Oh, it was on PlayStation. I can't remember even what it's called. Tink- Tinker the Rainbow. Something or other, but they got bad review. So I think it's. It, it, I mean, it, it will come back again. Blatantly obvious. Probably Mario well, Galaxy. They, they've kind of the last now, now they can kind of do anything. I think they've just kind of acknowledged that actually two D platformers work better, and if you're in three D, it tends to work better with like isometric games like Bastion or um, uh, that Brothers game I played that made me cry. Or, Bro, or just a, a, a Tale of Two Sons. Like, Rather than being like a 2D platformer, most of them tend now to be, you know, you look at your character's eyes. It's almost like a kind of first person shooter with kind of jump jumps and stuff. But yeah. Saying that though, I, I mean, um, on the Mario games, still 3D platformers. Well, no, I think the last ones were Mario Galaxy. The, the, the latest two, one on the 3DS and the one on the Nintendo Wii U, that is, um, it's like a half and half. You, you're looking at it from, a, from an angle, but then. You, you can't sweep the camera around, but your, ca- your character oh, is yeah, in a 3D yeah, the, the whole problem with those bloody platformers was always the freaking camera. I mean, how many times did you get killed by just walking in a straight line and the camera swung around on Mario 64 and you just walked off the edge? Oh, yeah, I, I was I just thinking that, even though I love the game. If the, the first level, getting up to the top of that little hill, mountain hill thing, there was a, there was a bit where you had to tie a rope over a bit. And I fell so many times to the bottom of the hill. And I was like, ah, you son of a... <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree with you, but I think that genre is definitely due to come back. Especially with Mario, if if they did like a Mario Galaxy three, I'd be all over it. Oh, that'd be so good. Oh. <laughs> I think so. I, I mean, from what you were saying earlier about people saying the console industry is in decline and all that kind of stuff, I think gaming's in a really good place. I just think that there's so much available. Whatever your 
niche now, whether you love multiplayer games, whether you love pick up, put down games, whether you like huge adventure games. Um, I mean, there's odd things to moan about. Oh God, Call of Duty again, yada, yada, yada. But essentially, whatever game you want now, you can find that that style of game and multiple games that are like it. And also, with, you can go back with ease. as well. And- yeah. I mean, the, the Nintendo store's got loads and it's adding all the time. And yeah, hopefully, you'll I mean, be able to cross yeah, that over. I think we're, we're living in a good place. In fact, I even say we're in a good age as well, because you might kind of say, what's well, a young person's game? But no, no, no. We, my friend, who are, you know, 35 slash 34, depending on which side of our birthday we are, um, <laughs> are still young enough to have reactions to play games, still have enough eyesight to see the games, and employed enough to actually buy them. And no arthritis. Woo! In our fingers, obviously. This, my friends, is one of the few weeks, there's only been a few, there will be a few of them where I am younger than, than Spud. By this time next week, I will be the same age as Spud. So You'll be the same age. You will. Well, it popped up on my calendar today. Yeah. I was like, ha Sunday. <laughs> Sunday is, is the Addy B day. Are you going to be happy? Are you going to be on? No. <laughs> I'm never, I never, I'm not particularly like, oh my God, I'm aging type person. I just tend to look in the mirror and kind of go, yep, yeah, ugly. But I've done that since I was about a teenager. So it doesn't really change the thing. Oh, virtual hug. Oh, oh do you feel my virtual arms going no, no, around? Just slow. Just, I'm just waiting for everyone in the chat to be like, oh, he's gorgeous. But they won't. I can't, I can't see the chat. I don't know. What's happening? Would, right, second question. And last question. Mm. Steph L on Twitter asks, hey, what's our favourite types of music? Anything you are the music man. Jam about on the piano. Yeah, but like, favourite bands, favourite genres, God, I think. So no, the, oh, I don't like this question because this is going to make me seem old. I, I'm, I'm going to give a really mixed answer that I'm going to get mixed reactions, I'm sure. Do, do you want to go first? No, I'm scared of looking old. Why? Oh, it's right. Because all, everything I listen to is old. You know, you know you're old when everything you, you listen to on, on, on music streaming services these days starts with the word classic. Do you know, if, do you, do you know what had its 20th anniversary the other day? What? What's the Story in Morning Glory? No. 20th oh anniversary God. of What's the Story in Morning Glory. 20th. Oh, you, you've made me feel really old now. Oh, my God. 20th. Gosh. A part of me still feels like Oasis is a new up-and-coming band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I haven't heard an album from them in ages. I know they split up, but oh, they should release something new. It'd be yeah, great. Those young men. <laughs> 20th. Oh. Jeez. That's that's crazy. I I read something. My my favorite um, rapper of all time, Eminem. He's like mid forties now. That's terrible. It's hard to be a rebellious rapper when you are you know working. Music, yeah, working exactly. Beer, going thin, just, collecting, paying your taxes. Soon he won't have to dye his hair white because it will be white. Yeah, it'll just be that. Yeah, it'll yeah. Well, it'd, it'd be that color. But my my favorite types of music, if I had to put it to three, are Britpop. Um, old rap R and B, as in nineties, not like. And I, I, I like Sugar Hill Gang and Jurassic Five and all that as well. Actually, like, like, you, mean and, like, you mean like Informer? <laughs> no, even though I did bought, buy that single, that, uh, <laughs> no, looking back on it, that wasn't the best edition. You, you, mean, you mean MC Hammer? Did you have to pray just to make it today? Yep, and I did a little shuffle with the big baggy trousers. But no, you know, like Sugar Hill Gang and stuff like that. I did, I did like that. But what, what kind Sugar of genre? Hill Gang. Is that the bop, bop, wow? <laughs> it's like a hip hop, the hip oh, to yeah, the yeah. hop. Got a hip to the hop. I love, I love that. When oh god, so good. Anyway, um, and stuff like like Queen is my favorite band. They're just I, I, I like other bands, but Queen. So like rock pop as well. That's probably gets me going. I like. I mean, I do, I do listen to music, but I, uh, in it, I suppose, but I tend if I'm going to do music, I tend to sit down at the piano. Or, or the guitar and and play something I know, but in a different. This is gonna. This is a really nerdy answer, but I tend to like playing things in a different style to which they were originally written, and just kind of having fun with music rather than necessarily listening to it. But the stuff I mm. do listen to, again, it's old. Um, Elton John, big fan. Oasis, country music is a kind of genre, but kind of modern country, but kind of like Brad Paisley, Dierks, Bentley. Um, uh, I love this bar. Whoever, whoever that is, what his, what his name is. Um, Queen, I know loads of. I used to love Brian, Brian Adams quite a lot. I guess it's kind of rocky pop, but I then I like I like a lot of little things in little genres as well, like Petrol Boys. They could fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I can put on the occasional dance track when I'm into it. A bit of, a bit of heavy rock if I'm in the right mood. Creed. 
I said about my um, undying love for meatloaf the other day, and someone at work mocked me so hard. And I was like, what? They're awesome. Well, not there, but him. He's, he, he, I, I, I love Bad Hell and all that stuff. I don't care what anyone says. I have no shame in my music. Some nights it don't come easy. <laughs> and some nights it don't come hard. Is that the line? And some nights yeah. it don't come at all, and these are the days that never end. Lyrics are just so inappropriate. Looking yep. back. <laughs> it reminds me of that time you said. You just randomly messaged me one day going, why is it that you can say things in a song that you wouldn't say out loud to a person? It's, true. it's still true. <laughs> it is. But the, and then I started like thinking about songs in my head and I was like, oh my God, he's right. That's really inappropriate to go up to someone. <laughs> to say some crazy it, it stuff. It bothers me how many songs are just about sex. I mean, I'm not saying that you know, human beings don't think about sex a lot. We do. But we don't walk around the street kind of going, I'm really horny. I'm going to do you tonight. Mm, up and down, <laughs> up against the wall. Yeah. Mm. You know, <laughs> and yet somehow in the medium of song, this seems to have become, become a perfectly acceptable and normal thing to do. I remember, I, remember, I remember seeing this little kid once, you know, five or six, maybe a little bit older, you know, singing along with, you know, I'm horny, 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 horny. You know, and it's like, yeah, I I noticed that when when my my children first started talking, when they started singing songs like that, like, my milkshake brings all the no, what are you doing? Stop that! You can't say that. Why? I can't tell you. Shush. And then slap them. Don't sing that ever again. Yeah. But yeah, but, there's, there's, there's so many things to write songs about. I mean, obviously, I'm going I'm to plug my own silly songs here. But you know, I'm often kind of just driving along and you know invent a little song about you know how you know, wire circles round and, and things like that. You know, there's just so many possible topics for songs and they just seem to resort so often to banging each other. It just it just seems uncreative. <laughs> well, you're right. There's not a lot of songs out there that are about wire circles round and just, stuff. Yeah, you know, that was just an example of, you know, let's go out there. I mean, one of the things I'll say for Oasis, I mean, their lyrics made no sense, but they they... There's very rare do you get an Oasis song, which is, a, which is a love song or a sex song. You know, they're all just about random stuff. And sometimes you, look, you get to the end of the song and go, I don't know what that was about. But isn't that more interesting than a song which is just about, mm, I'm going to take you up against that wall, spin you around and lick my hand and, and, <laughs> and then tell people I, about it in a song? I'm going to lick you up and down until you say stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. On that highly poetic and slightly disturbing note, we should probably bring Spadaddy to an end, of which the Spadaddy song does not contain any references to any form of sexual position, unless the fat and potato is a sexual position. But if that is the case, then that, that was completely unintentional. Anything you want to plug? Uh, just us. Plug plug us, us. So if you're watching it on Twitch, then you know Twitch. But if if not, um, uh, the Adipose TV is Twitch if you want to watch the, the the live, the show that's happening right now, not when you're listening to it on a podcast, um, then go there and check uh, us out. Uh, also, you can follow us on Twitter at SpadaddyCast. And if you want it in podcast format, you can find us on iTunes, Audio Booms, Podkicker, all the good podcast providings out there. You can find us everywhere. And if you want to send us a little email, you can even do that at SpadaddyCast at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for your support and for coming along tonight. And if you're listening to the podcast, then a special thank you to you, because that's obviously where we're trying to grow. But uh, take care. I, I will be back with Doctor Who Legacy on Thursday. I probably won't be around tomorrow because I'm doing some school stuff. And Spadaddy will be back next week. Next week, See baby. Boys and girls. Take care. And here is the highly appropriate and not at all sexual Spadaddy song. But and I'm Eddie. Just listen, you'll glisten Cause you'll be so happy Our podcast is random talk On this and on that Yeah, yeah, yeah But what did you expect from potatoes and fat? Yeah, what did you expect from potatoes and fat?